All right, this is the Rube Goldberg challenge explanation. So the question is, what is a Rube Goldberg contraption? So Rube Goldberg, so whenever a machine is made too complicated to do a, a simple job, it is called a Rube Goldberg. Now, Rube Goldberg was a cartoonist and he would draw cartoons like the one seen to the right. And it's basically accomplishing uh, by complex roundabout means what seemingly could be done simple. So this Rube Goldberg challenge, team shall design and create a Rube Goldberg type contraption that starts with a team member letting go of a ping pong ball that will be able to extinguish a lit tea candle uh, with the contraption performing four or more different actions using at least three different simple machines to complete the task. So this is, these are the rules for the Rube Goldberg challenge. So the contraption must start with a team member letting go of the ping pong ball. Now this does not count as an action. The contraption must perform four or more different actions. An action is defined as a transfer of energy or one cause through one effect. So an example would be like ball rolls down ramp, springs mousetrap. So we have cause and effect. Mousetrap pulls a string causing scissors to cut. So that's cause and effect. Scissors cut a cord causing a weight to fall. Cause effect and weight drops uh, on tin foil causing the light bulb to turn on, once again, cause and effect. So notice the effect of the last action should be the cause of that first, of the, the next one. All right, so the contraption must include at least three different simple machines. So lever, wheel and axle, pulley, incline plane, wedge, screw. So you have to include at least three of those, right? Now it's not just three levers, not three wheel and axles. I mean, you can use multiple of each, but you have to have three different simple machines. Now, so some, some uh, things will be supplied. So you have connects. Uh, those are like little pieces that uh, uh, like they, they click together. Uh, string, tape, cups, various other items like weights uh, that you can use will be provided. Um, but items can be brought from home. Now, only safe items approved by the teacher can be used. So this contraption must fit in a space of one cubic meter, but can operate outside that space. So that's basically the size of the, 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 the lab tables. But what that means is one meter by one meter by one meter. Uh, it has to fit into that but it can operate outside of that. So that means like if, you know, a rubber band shoots out, like that, that's not going to count against you. Or like, you know, something launches up, comes back down. So it can operate outside of that, but it must fit inside of that. So that, that's just to uh, limit the amount, uh, you know, of space that we're using. Uh, so it's not going like all over the, all over the room. Um, the contraption can only store energy as gravitational potential energy or elastic potential energy, but is not unlimited but is not limited in amount of either. So what this means is that you can have like an object hanging that's stored gravitational potential energy, or you can have like a rubber band being stretched. Well, that's gonna be stored elastic potential energy, but you can't have chemical potential energy. You can't have something that's gonna like, I don't know, like light on fire or something, right? I mean, yes, that tea candle's gonna be there, but you have to extinguish it. And you can't have uh, like uh, electrical potential energy. You can't have anything that plugs in. So the only type of stored energy gravitational potential energy or elastic potential energy, but you're not limited in the amount. So you can store as much as that as you want. So teams will be given 30 minutes to build the contraption on the final day. Um, and teams will be given two attempts after that allotted time. So yeah, if the, the first time it messes up, make a small adjustment, uh, then you'll, you'll get one more attempt at that. All right. So this is the grading for Rube Goldberg. So uh, actually completing the task, so extinguishing uh, that T candle will be worth three points. Uh, each action of the four required actions worth one point each for the total of four points. So no additional points for additional actions. Um, now each action of the three, or sorry, each uh, of the simple machines, each of the three required simple machines is uh, worth one point each for a total of three points, no additional points for additional simple machines, but you can have them if you need to. Now the lab packet is worth 10 points, but will be graded on quality. Um, now bonus points, so five bonus points can be awarded to uh, teams as well. So smallest successful contraption. So if it's like really uh, night, or, uh, nice and like neat and tidy in a small space, um, and that's just the smallest contraption, then uh, you can get extra points. So longest time for successful contraption. So with only four required actions, it's going to go pretty quick. But if there's a team that like really you know knows how to draw it out uh, with maybe like some gears or uh, just some way to draw it out, then uh, they'll earn some bonus points as well. Most actions. So this is where yeah you you can earn some for uh, most actions right uh, for successful contraption. 
uh, best decorated. So you can like decorate it, uh, have a theme if you want. Uh, and the one, yeah, the one that's the best will get some bonus points. All right. So let's just take a look at the process. So every day of the week, students will get a chance to plan, build, and troubleshoot uh, their contraption. So at the end of each day, all parts will be disassembled and put away. So this is basically because uh, there's a lot of classes in here. We just don't have enough room to set contraptions aside. And I don't want you know other students or like other classes messing with other students. So just to do this, like it's just sort of like practicing. Every day you, you, you build a little bit. Um, and now some, some strategy for this is like take pictures of completed parts, right? Hey, this is the action, take pictures. That way you can build that really fast uh, the next time. Once something works, uh, get that done. Now keep it simple, right? So if you have something super complicated, you're not gonna be able to, uh, you're not gonna be able to troubleshoot it for that long because if it takes you a long time to build, you're not gonna be able to troubleshoot. So try to keep it as simple as possible. Now on Friday, uh, teams will be given 30 minutes to build the final contraption. After each contraption is used, they will all be disassembled and put away. So essentially, everything is a trial run. The first thing that happens, we come in here Friday, just go back there, uh, start start building your contraption. 30 minutes, it's a long time, but uh, make, a, make good use of that, right? So then there's like a, a time at the end just to go around and uh, get all those and test all those contraptions and break everything down. Um, now, if you, if, you, if you do have an unexcused absence on Friday, there will be not a chance to make it up. You will not receive credit for the project, right? So I know it's like, yeah, yeah. So I know it's, it's the week before a break, um, but like, if you're just not here, there's no chance to make this up. All right, so this is a, like a good example. Now notice how the Rube Goldberg machine is started with one step, that person releasing the uh, ball, and the energy is transferred to different objects to different places. And you can see that they extinguish that tea candle by smothering it. So th there's different strategies. You can smother the tea candle. You could, I don't know, maybe drop a little cup of water on it or sand. Um, you could, uh, you know, maybe make some sort of a fan out of like gears that, you know, blows it out. There's lots of different strategies. All right. So in just one of the, like what you're going to be doing for the different steps is in the table, uh, describe each four required actions in the contraption. So an action is defined as a transfer of energy or one cause through one effect. Define the cause and effect of each action. Then describe the energy transfer. So letting go of the ping pong ball does not count as an action. So that's like action number zero. That's what starts it. So cause, effect. And like I said, a good thing would be the effect of the last action will be the cause of the next action. And then describe the energy transfer, like what, what's happening during this, right? What, what kind of energy? Where is it going to? Um, now, also the simple machine. So in the table, uh, identify each of the required simple machines. So there's one, there's different ones. Now, you can have more, but you have to have three different, like those unique ones. So it's a lever, wheel, and axle, pulley, incline, plane, wedge, and screw. You need to have three of those. Identify the purpose. So it could be more than one. So of each of the three simple machines can do. So what that means is that, uh, remember, a simple machine can change the direction of the applied force, multiply the applied force at the expense of distance, multiply the distance at the expense of the applied force. So you could have a simple machine that does two of those. Just identify which each of those simple machines does. Um, then describe what each simple machine does in the contraption. So just like a brief description, it, it lifts this object or it, it, it just, whatever it does, just describe that. All right. So once again, this has been the Rube Goldberg challenge. Uh,